It is the day after Cameroon. We're heading to the quarterfinals and I'm here with two of the four musketeers. Right, we are here at the Players Hotel with Tony and Keith. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. I feel very fancy here. <laughs> We're spoiled. <laughs> now, uh, we have to talk about the quarterfinals. How does it feel? Special. Yeah. Um, it was a great game against Cameroon, you know, many ups and downs in the game, but ultimately we came out on top and we're absolutely buzzing to go into quarterfinals ahead of Norway. Um, what a game and what an atmosphere as well here. Yeah, it was brilliant. I think the Cameroon fans always bring a good atmosphere and yeah, it was, it was special to play in front of and all our families over here as well, you know, they've been amazing supporting us throughout and I'm sure they'll continue to support us for the rest of the tournament. So yeah, happy to get the win for them and move on to the fourth final. And how do you feel that the game went? You guys played some great stuff out there. Yeah, you know what? I feel like that was the hottest game we've played in. So it was tough um, as in like the heat wise, but I thought we played some good football, um, you know. When we could. Well, yeah, <laughs> when the, yeah, when the game was actually playing. Um, but you know, the, the game brought many controversies, you know, but ultimately we stuck to the game plan. We stuck, we stayed with each other, stuck together and we got the win. But it must be so hard, like you just said, in this heat. I mean, Tony, you must be kind of used to it out in Barcelona, but it must be really hard when you're out there on that pitch. No, it is, just to stay concentrating and with the stop starts as well. And it was difficult, but both teams are playing in the, in the heat, so it's the same for us both. But yeah, it's difficult. The pace of the game drops a little bit, but we have to get used to it because I think in Lyon it's about 30 degrees and that's where the final is and that's our aim. So we have to adapt quickly and... We've tried some stuff before we come out here, you know, we tried to acclimatise a bit, getting into the sauna and um, building our minutes and trying to do things that way, wearing extra clothing for training and I don't want to give you too many of our methods, but there's two. Um, but yeah, so the girls are prepared and we're ready and yeah, we, we all love a bit of sun, don't we? For sure. <laughs> Vitamin D, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, against Cameroon, what different kind of tactics did you have to overcome yesterday? <laughs> Tony's like, mentally, <laughs> yeah, 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 mentally. I think we're still a bit tired this morning from it. It was just a roller coaster, and I think at a World Cup you can expect anything, and you're faced with different challenges. And obviously, it's my second World Cup now, and you know it was the same the last World Cup. You just you face different nations, different cultures, people you're not used to coming up against. And definitely, yesterday was one of the craziest games I've been involved in. But you know, credit to the girls, we stuck with it. We do a lot of work in the classroom about speaking about staying in games, you know, staying in control. We knew that far was big this tournament, so we had to work our way round and stay in control. And every single one of us done that from the bench, from Phil to the rest of the girls. And, you know, I think we deserve credit for that as well. Absolutely. And Keats, how important is it keeping that composure and that focus during those lengthy stoppages? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, just after the stoppages, you've seen that they scored the offside goal. VAR doesn't lie, you know, when you go in, coming into the tournament that it was going to be used and I felt like the referee made the right decisions but, you know, as soon as you switch off they can punish you and we knew that, you know, the front three of Cameroon is brilliant, you know, the number seven and number three have showed in this tournament that they can score goals and they're quick and so we had to stay concentrated throughout the game and it can be hard at times, you know, um, obviously with everything going on you, you can't switch off for a second and I felt um, the girls all, all stuck together in their moments and made sure we was in our positions and obviously we just left the referee to, to do a job and, um, you know, it was tougher out there, um, I'm, I'm not going to lie, um, it's probably a game I've never experienced and neither as probably as the referee. Um, because of so many different things that went on. Um, she nearly got whiplash at one point, you know? <laughs> you no, know, but like, the, the, it's like, it's crazy. She must have felt like she was yeah. in a car crash after she finished that game. What were you guys saying to each other in those periods of time as well? I generally remember one situation and we're all trying to help each other stay in it. <laughs> Alex Green was by the bench. Two of their players had gone to the bench, think they were protesting to give up the game or whatever. They were chatting to the manager and, Alex Lima was in between them and she's like, just like in a little world of room because it's easy to get carried away. Mm -hmm. But actually Steph had played the ball out and the game was going on. So I'm like to Alex, 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 
Oh, the atmosphere's mad and I'll stay in it. But then while I'm telling her to stay in it, I'm not in it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's so hard, like you're trying to help each other. But that's the team spirit that we've got, you know, and we pulled through. And like Keith says, there was a time after, you know, a couple of the breaks when we did let them in, you know, there was the back pass and then there was the offside. And, you know, our defence needs to be switched on. But it is really, really, really difficult to all stay for, sure. for 90 minutes plus the extra time in it. But we've done it and we're through. And, Put that one to bed now and we can yeah, move on to Norway. Definitely on that, one. that is what these guys thought. But let's see how you reacted at full time at the stadium and online. Oh, best game we've played yet. Loved every minute of it and they deserved it because they worked really, really hard. Uh, very professional, very calm performance from England as well. Probably our best performance yet, I'd say. Um, I think in the last few games we've lost it for like half an hour, got a bit quiet, but um, this time we were really strong. As a team, we're just feisty. We did what needed to be done but we need to up our game against Norway. We need to make better passes and, and be a bit more clinical. Nikita Paris did really well, Ellen White scored a brilliant goal and they just all played really well together. Thank them. The Spice Girls casually supporting you guys. How cool is that? Wow. Amazing. Special. You know, growing up, we loved it. I loved the Spice Girls. Me and my sister, we used to, a little karaoke, we were pretty tone deaf, both of us. But, you know, we used to shake our, shake our bacon <laughs> in the living room. I well, used to, your mood. Yeah. That's a little. You used to fight with your mates. We used to have like a group of mates. I was like, I'm Baby Spice, and my mates are like, but my hair's like hair's to say, I'm like, no, I'm Baby Spice. Yeah, I always got called Melby, so. Scary Baby Spice. Yeah, scary Spice. <laughs> the referees like, are scared I used to come out with me uh, my leopard print. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can bring it next time on the uh, next uh, show. No, no, yeah. like <laughs> we need to recruit, we've got two. Yeah. Oh. Get Shotgun. a few more now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, another one. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I, I heard your vocals before Auditions. and I'm not too sure. Wow, this is getting all good keys. Uh, <laughs> now, I'm sure you guys have heard, but 6.9 million people watched the game last oh. night. And how incredible is that? Impressive. Keep watching, keep watching, eh? No, it's amazing. I mean, I know in the past loads of people have said about women's football not being an avenue there. People don't want to watch it, people don't want to know about it and stats don't lie, so... Keep supporting us, hopefully we can keep winning and yeah, long may it continue. And what's the atmosphere been like here in the stadiums? It kind of feels like home games, doesn't it? For sure, when you look up, all you see is red and white. Like, and in the game, obviously Cameroon had their section and he was loud with the drums, but then the rest of the stadium was England fans. And it's amazing, you know, 20,000 fans. Over 20,000 fans were there yesterday and, you know, keep coming out, keep supporting and we we'll, we'll hope to do you as proud. One thing though, no, what is it with this Baby Shark song? Oh. Right! <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I mean, she's been waiting to say that, by the way. She's been waiting. Like, she's been, been waiting. itching. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you've got like the Cameroon fans and they're all cool, all dressed up, like on the drums and we're like, baby, <laughs> shark. No, and that's like, going to uh, be in my head now. Do you want me to dress up as a shark? Is this no, where we're going? Uh, it's like it, but I'm just... You don't need a mascot. <laughs> Because I'll do it. <laughs> I just want to know where it's come from and who's behind it. But By the way, I love atmosphere. the trumpet as we was going into the stadium in our bus. Okay. We went into the underground tunnel, but before we went in, there was a guy on the trumpet. It was, it yeah, was the band something. follow us around. But it is amazing. And have you seen the murals at home on the walls of you yeah. guys? Yeah. That must be so special for you and your families to see. Yeah, well, especially the being in our home cities, you know, people walking past and taking photos, sending, you, sending them on, you know. Um, Liverpool just, producing again, me, you and Al. Yeah. We got the most players in that city. <laughs> Same city. Scousers. Special, Taken special, over. special place. <laughs> Did you ever imagine all of this when you were growing up? It's mad because we've all grew up together, haven't we? We've all come through Everton Centre of Excellence together at different times and, you know, we're all in the Everton first team together. I was a bit older than Keats and Al, so I was probably starting a bit more Keats and that were just breaking through and now that we're all here together sharing the same experience it's just and then seeing all our pictures around Liverpool it, it really is brilliant yeah, isn't it's it? Yeah it's class. I've literally come all the way through with Alex it's crazy yeah. like I remember meeting her the first first day at Everton Centre of Excellence and she come over to me and was like what's your name and I was like <laughs> Tim and I didn't know a person and she, just, and she just broke the ice and then from then we've been 
top friends ever since. Oh, oh that's lovely. Yeah, the boards around the pool and everything. Yeah, that's awesome to see. Now, throughout the tournament here on Lionesses Daily, we're giving you the chance to win amazing prizes thanks to the Lionesses Supporters Club. Next up, here's the chance to win Beth Mead signed shirt and signed boots. How cool, yeah. Not bad. Beth, bad. <laughs> Beth is delivering the goods. What an amazing prize. So to enter, all you've got to do is go to the link on the screen and answer a very simple question. And we will announce the winner ahead of the game against Norway. Good luck. Now we have our FIFA Women's World Cup France 2019 official sticker collection by Panini. Wow. Keats, you've already signed it. I have. Tony, you have not oh, It's sorry. not full yet, but it's actually getting there. Okay. So it's got all 23 players in. And remember to keep watching the show to find out how you could win it and keep sending us your tweets your videos everything using the hashtag lionesses daily you were down there i think yeah. now wow. norway is next we beat them in 2015 tony you played against them mm -hmm. what sort of threat do they pose i've watched them as well this tournament and they, they've been brilliant i said in my, one of my interviews the other day they were one of my teams to watch so Hopefully they're not, here, they're not here too much longer after our game. Um, but no, it's going to be a great game. It really is. You know, a lot of the girls play in the WSL as well. And they've got some top players. But, you know, we can't write ourselves off because we've been producing. And, mm -hmm. you know, we watched their game as well against Australia. And it was a, it was a great battle. Either team could have won. Um, and I think our game's going to be pretty much the same. So them 6.4 million viewers that were watching. 6.9. Oh, nine. Nine. Sorry, sorry. Everyone Don't count. Sorry. <laughs> Tune in again because it's going to be a cracker. It will indeed, sure. Keats. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting game. As Tony said, I watched the game also against Australia and I thought Australia were brilliant too. You know, it went to penalties 50-50. It's always the way, but... Um, you know, yeah, as I was watching the game, I was studying in case either team we was going to get, you know, so um, really exciting. Norway plays some attack and football and um, we do too, so it will really be an exciting spectacle. It will indeed. Now, she scored yesterday. Here is Ellen White on what it means to be a lioness. Hi, I'm Ellen White and I'm a lioness. It means everything to, to be a lioness. It's a, it's a real privilege to, to play for your country. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate um, about playing for England and being a lioness. To wear the three lions on your shirt, it's, it's a true honour and yeah, to, to make my family proud. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dream to be honest. My biggest sacrifice um, would probably be family time. I've missed out on a lot of family occasions, seeing family, being around for different occasions and just missing that time with them really. But, um, but yeah, they totally understand what it takes to, to be a professional footballer, to, to, to be an INS. So um, they totally understand, but it's still hard sometimes to, to miss out on those, uh, those opportunities to see them. Great stuff. Now, before we let you go off to La Havre, do you have a little message for the fans out there? Yeah, big message. Keep the support coming. Um, it's been fantastic. We can really feel it. Um, the support in the stadium, the support back home, all the messages that we're getting on social media. We really feel the buzz and it's really pushing us on. So the more you support, the better we'll perform. So keep it coming. Keith. You know what, guys, I couldn't have put it any better than what Tony's just done. But just keep supporting us. Thank, thank you. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. We will see you back here at the same time tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>